So we just went through some engine failures the past few days. Now what happens if you have the opposite problem? Instead of no power, you have continuous full power. Hello everyone and welcome back to J1 Aviation, our month-long series on aircraft emergencies. Today is 8 of 31 in our month-long series, May Day 8. So today we're talking about a broken throttle cable. So here's the scenario for today's flight. Let's say you are climbing out of your departure airport westbound on a VFR flight. So at 4,500 feet, you pitch the nose over, pull the throttle back, and there's no resistance. The RPM doesn't reduce. In fact, as you are in level flight now, the RPM continues to increase at a point past red line. So what do you do in this situation? Well, the situation here, of course, is a broken throttle cable. So these training aircraft, when a throttle breaks, should break to full open. So better to have max power than no power if a cable breaks, right? But if it breaks to full open and the RPMs are past red line, how much of an issue actually is that? Well, how much it's over and how long it's been over, that's for the maintenance crew to deal with after your ordeal is over. So the first action here is to start heading to an airport, right? Ideally one with a very long runway. You know, to keep the RPMs more un under control, you can continue climbing rather than continuing your level flight. The higher altitude will decrease engine power and max RPM. I suppose you could switch to one mag, right? That should reduce engine RPM by 100 or so. And you can also keep the mixture lean to keep the cylinder head temperatures from getting too hot. So you can keep climbing in this configuration until you reach your airport. Then to descend for landing, you would pull the mixture to idle cutoff. Now, in theory, if you ever needed engine power again, you would advance the mixture and the engine would fire back up. But be aware, there are cases of this throttle stuck happening and then the mixture being pulled, but the engine never comes back to life. So when you pull that mixture, you may only get one shot. So the overall point here is that after you have killed the engine, then you would spiral down over your destination and perform a power off 180, right? So as you descend, you want to plan, plan your position, a beam, the touchdown point, a thousand feet AGL. Now, depending on how long the runway is, right? You wanna position yourself, ideally a beam, your touchdown point, maybe like a quarter of the way down the runway. If it's a long runway, right? Like maybe eight or 9,000 feet. You know, this almost ensures that you won't land short and it'll still give you like 6,000 feet plus to roll out and to land, even if you overshoot a little bit. And then after you land, you know, pull off the runway if you can. If you can't, get a tug, pull you off to the ramp. So how can you prevent a broken throttle? Well, there probably isn't actually much you can do here, right? Proper maintenance is always the best practice, but something like this might be difficult to see ahead that it would fail. So stuck at full power, day eight of 31. Full power is always better than no power. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll hope to catch you tomorrow on day number nine.